I will start and start talk about crowdsourcing. And I will begin with the initial idea of crowdsourcing and crowdfunding and sharing the economy. And then we will move on to many examples that will try to show what's going on today is sharing the economy and then crowdfunding. The main idea behind all of these uh, ideas is the wisdom of crowds. The wisdom of crowds claim that in the right situations, groups are smarter even more than the smarter men in the group, the smarter people in the group. One of the famous examples is the ox example. When we play with farmers in a in county fair and ask people to guess what's the weight of ox, it seems that the average of the farmers know the exact answer. И доказателство за това е, когато попитали фермери, откъде ще мине един бивол, всички фермери знаели пътя на бивола. There are many other examples that the wisdom of crowds holds. For example, for example, who wants to be a millionaire TV show shows that on average, many of the times the crowds in the, the audience know the answers more than the experts. Actually, democracy is one of the examples of the wisdom of crowds. We let, we all participate in democracy, election, and because on the average we are smarter than everyone else. Democracia is another example of how people are like people, are more humble than the individuals. Other examples are the presentation of the type of Stani Bogat, when the questions are given to the audience, they are given to the audience. Yeah. We need four, we need four uh, elements, uh, we need to keep them in order that the wisdom will be uh, crowd, the, the crowd will be wise. We need diversity of opinions. If all of us see, think in the same way, there will not be wisdom of crowd. We need many opinions, many ideas in order that the crowd will be wise. Това, което ни дава групата от хора до питването до много хора е разнопосочност на мненията. Не ни трябва от хора събрани на едно място, които мислят еднакво, а мислящи различно. Also we need that the people will be independent. If we are rely on someone, if we are sitting in a management board and the manager say his opinion first, and all of us says yes, you are right, yes, you are right, there will not be in the wisdom of the crowds, the crowds will not be wise. We need to be decentralized. People need to be able to specialize, to draw their, on their own knowledge. If I will ask you what's the weight of the ox that uh, is my backyard, probably you can't guess uh, the ox weight because you are not seeing the ox. You don't know what's the size of the ox. So you need uh, to be able to learn to be decentralized. And the last element that we ask it, is some aggregation tool. And crowdfunding and crowds and the sharing of economy is aggregation tool for the wisdom of the crowds. Uh, earlier we see Kickstarter, and I, and I will go again to Kickstarter. Kickstarter is an example of aggregation tool that let us to, to collect the ideas of the crowd. Други важни елементи на груповата мисъл, това са независимостта, хората трябва да бъдат с независимо мнение, а не да се съгласяват, например, с шефа си, да бъдат децентрализирани, да могат да имат специалност в различни области и да се готови да се учат. А също така е важно обобщаването на информация, събирането на едно място на цялата информация на лично. So if I succeed to convince you in a short presentation that the wisdom can be wise if we keep these four elements, why not to take this crowd people and make them as a workforce? As you know, many organizations 
during the year doing outsourcing. They take roles that they usually do inside the organization and outsource it to other uh, constructors or other people or other workers. The crowdsourcing idea is the same idea, is to take work that usually we done within the organization and take it out to other people that will do it for us. Важно е да можем да превърнем групата хора в работна сила. Това, което обикновено се случва в една организация, много често е аутсорсвано навън, възлагано извън организацията. Същата идея лежи в основата на краудсорсинг. Usually the crowdsourcing, the crowds are rewarded with some kind of reward for the job, but it's not always the case. If we think about Wikipedia, Wikipedia is a kind of crowdsourcing. Instead of letting the publisher to write the encyclopedia, we are all writing our own encyclopedia, which is the Wikipedia. There is no monetary reward in the Wikipedia. No one gets money for Wikipedia. But we get prestige, we get uh, recognition, we get uh, self-satisfaction and other rewards that are not monetary rewards. Много често групите получават възнаграждение, но не винаги е такъв случай. Да вземем за пример Wikipedia. Това е една енциклопедия, която се пише от всеки един от нас и няма финансова награда за приноса към енциклопедията, а всеки получава като възнаграждение удовлетворението и престижа, който това му носи. Това е пример от какво се случва с Wikipedia. Възможно ви взема a small number of high salary experts that, experts that, read, that write the encyclopedia. And what Wikipedia done, it, it's changed the blue script into this one, which is a lot of unexperts or people, unmasters, people that know a little bit about something that write the encyclopedia. And the blue area is similar to this blue area. And we, can, and we need to choose if we want to work with small number of con contributors that each one of them is highly expert or with a lot of people that each one of them know a little bit about something. Или хоризонталната синя линия, която представлява многобройните хора, които всеки един от тях не е експерт, но също носи принос за развитието на енциклопедията. Не всички, не всички краудсорсинг и краудсорсинг, но краудсорсинг ще работи. Ние трябва да чувствам, ние трябва да чувствам, че ако краудсорсинг е много хомогенно, или много централизирано, or too divided, or too emotive, or too emotional, there is probably will be problems with the crowd, wisdom of the crowds, or the crowds with, to keep in mind the four elements that, the, that each one of these points is violate and, and make the wisdom worse than the group. Sometimes we call it group think, when the group is thinking in the wrong way and not in the right way as we want. Трябва обаче винаги да имаме предвид четирите елемента, които влияят върху сълпата и върху мнението на групата хора. Това са, ако една група е твърде хомогенна или твърде централизирана, или твърде разделена, или имитира, или е твърде емоционална, това би могло да повлияе на общото мнение и ние трябва много да внимаваме в каква е насока отива мнението на групата. Some of the benefits for companies to do crowdsourcing are that uh, they can solve problems at little cost. Spending is by results. If you find a solution, if the crowds find a solution for the problem, the company usually pays them. If no, there is no exchange of money. Organization can tap wide wider range of talent. I don't know to do anything here. I have an idea. I go to the crowd, I go to the people in the internet and ask them, can you help me with something? I can turn the customers into designers if I let, 
they made the customers opportunity to design the t-shirt, to design the clothes, to design the solution, uh, Starbucks, uh, the, coffee, the coffee chain, and ask the customers to give them ideas for new products. So the customers are obligated, or more obligated, to the company. They can turn the customers into marketers and more. Могат да бъдат ползите от краудсорсинга за компаниите. Могат да, чрез възлагане на решенията на група хора, може да се получи правилното решение на ниска цена. Заплащането е само при постигнати резултати. Организацията има достъп по този начин до голяма група таланти, които може да използва при решаване на проблемите си. Самите клиенти могат да бъдат превърнати в дизайнери, например, или в продавачи. Например, Starbucks използва тази, този принцип да изисква от клиентите си нови идеи за нови продукти. Some, challenge, some challenges with crowdsourcing. The, the big one is the quality. If I ask people, please give me the next product that I need, that I want to market or the next ideas, uh, sometimes the answer is not in the right quality that they want. There is some problems in the quality. If I, if I, I ask people to recognize uh, the Malaysian airplane that, uh, that disappeared from the radars in the oceans, and I'm not sure that they have the right qualifications to identify it to them. So the big issue with crowdsourcing is the quality. Moreover, that uh, some intellectual property will impact. If I ask people, uh, I have problem in my company, and need to tell them what is my problem, what I'm doing, how I do things, so some of my intellectual, intellectual property is linked. There's a problem with the time constraints. I can't ask some of my, not my workers, other people to to do a job for me and to put them in a straight uh, title square. I think we have echo from South Also, crowdsourcing uh, can ill will with my own employees if I give prices and if I give problems to other than my own employees, my own employees can feel uncomfortable with that. And the big challenge is to choose what to crowdsource and how I can get more from uh, outsourcing, crowdsourcing uh, initiatives. Какви могат да бъдат предизвикателствата и проблемите от краудсорсинга? На първо място това е качеството. Много трудно можем да преценим, да изискваме конкретно качество от хора извън нашата компания. Освен това, много лесно може да изтича интелектуална собственост като информация. Не можем да възлагаме конкретни срокове за изпълнение на задачите или да контролираме производството на крайния продукт. Освен това, възлагането на задачи на хора извън компанията често може да доведе до влушаване на взаимоотношенията в компанията и също така е важно да преценяваме доколко можем да възлагаме и кои точно задачи на външни изпълнители. But we don't know how to solve the problems. Usually when the problems are not essential and not critical. For example, one of the critical essential things in universities is lecturing. So usually universities know outsourcing the lecturing in the university. But many universities, especially in Israel, and I think here too, outsource their dining uh, and the food services because food is not essential critical to the, to the university operations. We, we choose to outsource when there is no time constraints, when we think we can get benefits from the crowds environment, and usually when it's one-time problems and we can't solve it, 
Лиза и Наумс. Какви видове проблеми можем да аутсорсваме, когато нямаме вътрешни експерти, които да решат нашия проблем или когато проблемите са от ниска важност, когато нямаме ограничения с времето, също можем да се аутсорсваме. Когато имаме очаквания, че ще получим ползи от допитване до голяма група хора, също обичайните проблеми, които аутсорсваме, са еднократни. Called Galaxy Zoo. It's a system that asks people, uh, show people images, and ask them to identify the galaxy with if there is within the picture. Един пример за Аркосане, това е, например, Galaxy Zoo, когато на хора им се показват картини с звезди, да идентифицират коя е галактиката, която виждат. Twenty-five million galaxies classified. Image recognition. We have many examples of image recognition in crowdsourcing because it's a hard task for computers to do. По този начин има идентифицирани един едно цяло двадесет и пет милиона галактики и класифицирани. Това е тежка задача и за това е аутсорсано. I bring this example first because this how school teacher. Dutch school teacher Harry Van Alken participated in this crowdsourcing initiative, and there is now a cut galaxy uh, named after her in the initiative. The good job. So, go to galaxy, try to identify galaxies. Maybe some of them will call us. Да, до този екзампъл, да на този пример на първо място, защото една учителка от Холандия участвала в този разпознаването на галактиките и днес има галактика наречена на нейно име. Така че ако вие се включите в този проект и вие бихте могли да вашето име може да бъде дадено като име на галактика някой ден. I will not go any deeper into crowdsourcing and initiative and solution. You have been a child of many crowdsourcing places that use the wisdom of the crowd, the motivation of the crowd, in different area we just spoken about Galaxy Zoo, which is listed here, and Wikipedia, which is listed here, and there's many other examples. I will spoke about Kiva later on, and there's many more examples here that you are welcome to go and try and see how they can help us and do things. Maybe I will just mention one more thing that fold it. Anyone play for it? Raise your hand, one of who played Fold It? Някой играе или Fold It? So Fold It is a game. Fold It is a game. Това е една игра. And you can download and install on your Windows, Macintosh or Android machine. The game is to try to fold protein into their 3D structural shape. It's an interesting game. It's a puzzle. And you can enhance Sides by fold the protein chain into the right position. Това е игра, която можете да инсталирате на вашите компютри. Тя включва, тя е научна игра. Може да подобрите знанията си, като се опитате да вместите протеинови протеини в правната верига. А иначе аз преди това ви дадох примери с Galaxy Zoo и с Wikipedia, за да иллюстрираме това как мъдростта и мотивацията на групата могат да бъдат използвани. Но примерите са изключително многобройни, по-късно ще се спреме на други от тях. Юхай Бетлер, which is a market-based, decentralized system for the economy. There's also some centralized system like the film out of state, government, and the non-profit, which is non-market-based. I think the most interesting and relevant to our discussion is the social share and exchange system, which is non-market-based. It's not based on a negotiation between 
relations between the parties about the price and this Wikipedia is an example of non value based decentralized, but the problem Wikipedia is not a transactional framework. It's a transactional knowledge framework. We don't deal with product but with knowledge. So I want to concentrate on my next three minutes about social sharing and exchange system that develop product. Тази рамка е създадена от един харвардски професор по право и тук виждаме базирани на пазарно базирани, непазарно базирани, централизирани и децентрализирани системи. Като фокуса на нашите дискусии ще падаме върху социалния обмен на информация, който не е пазарно базирана и децентрализирана система, по подобие на Wikipedia. Because of the importance of the collaborative economy, because we have seen in the last year many new initiatives and many new ideas, many new opportunities in collaborative economy, what I'm going to do in my uh, rest of the talk, I'm going to focus about each of these areas that they are examples of the collaborative economy, and try to figure or give you a little a short example of one company uh, within this uh, area, each color, I don't, I'm not sure you see from uh, your places, each area is divided by a uh, sector. So we're going to move from each sector to sector to see one example in each sector that use collaborative or sharing economy in order to produce their uh, product. И економика на сътрудничеството е нещо, което в последно време набира голяма скорост и ние имаме много примери, които можем да споменем в тази област, в различните сектове, съм обелязан в различните сектори от економиката, на които ще се спрем и ще коментираме. Many of these companies are mediators between peer-to-peer -peer and clients. In collaborative economy, compared to regular economy, there is no fear that same thing. And it, instead, collaborative economy try to bring together peers, clients, us, in order to do economic activities. При тази економика на сътрудничество няма фирма, която продава на клиенти, а се търси контакта между равни, равнопоставени. Тя се опитва да събере различни компании, различни клиенти, нас и да се случват сделките между тези страни. I let them talk about Monirate. Monirate is a company that uh, brings together unused equipment and demand for equipment. Това е една компания от общинския сектор, нарича се Monirent. Тя има за цел да среща фирми, които такива лица и фирми, които имат неизползвано оборудване с други, които имат нужда от оборудване. My name is Alan Mon. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Munirat, and I'm extremely excited to be here with all of you um, to tell you a story about our company with an unexpected twist at the end. So Munirat, in essence, is a website that lets public agencies rent underutilized equipment and share personnel with other public agencies. We're essentially bringing the sharing economy to government. And it's a trend that is called collaborative government, and we see it pop up everywhere in the country. When we were researching the space, we found out that government-owned equipment sits idle 70% of the time. To put that into perspective, in California alone, cities have spent over $24 billion in equipment over the past five years. $24 billion at 70% utilization, that's $16.8 billion of locked-in capital. 
Now, if that still doesn't sink in, let me put it another way. That's two and a half times the cost to build the new Bay Bridge. That's in equipment that's just sitting in yards right now. So what are cities doing about this? Is government working to solve this issue? Well, as it turns out, yes, there is, there are governments and there are people out there that are solving, that are trying to solve this issue. One of them is Don Newell, who's pictured above me. Don is an amazing person. He's been sharing equipment for the past 20 years. But Don has a problem. And his problem is that his equipment sharing program still relies on static PDFs, phone calls. There's no good tool for people to find equipment or to keep track of how much of this equipment has been shared. This is where we recognize that technology could play an important role in solving this problem. Enter MuniRent. MuniRent is a website that lets government agencies share equipment. We provide a centralized database where you can find equipment easily with pictures. And you can, when you click on a piece of equipment, you can actually find its availability and any other details that are pertinent to that particular equipment. You can keep track of how much money you've spent in rentals and how much money you've actually uh, made by renting out equipment, how, how much revenue have you generated. All of this in one website. So to prove that this concept worked, we took it to Michigan after only five months We've had 23 municipalities signed up, one county, school districts, and even public universities. Now, <laughs> but something unexpected happened during this pilot project. And that unexpected thing was that someone contacted us to find out if they could use this same platform internally. And we actually, thought, yeah, this could, have, this could very well work, but uh, we needed a pilot customer. And this same person worked for the Oregon Department of Transportation. And the Oregon Department of Transportation, with 6,500 pieces of equipment, 300 crews, and more than 8,000 miles of paved roads, is using MuniRent internally to share equipment and be a more efficient agent. So, with that, we realized that MuniRent is not just for external equipment sharing. It actually fosters collaboration internally as well. That's why we're launching a new product called MuniRent Patriot Plan, which allows for municipalities, public agencies, and any local government to share equipment internally. So with that, I'd like to invite you to join the collaborative government movement and when you go home, share this story and tell your local city officials to give us a call. Thank you very much. В този филм видяхме как фирмата Munirent е посредник при наемане на оборудване, не използвано оборудване и персонал и предоставянето на това оборудване на съответно на фирми и клиенти, които се нуждаят от него. Голяма част от времето едно оборудване стои неработещо. Загубите, които, до които води това, биха били достатъчни да се построи нов голям мост, например, както е Bay Bridge. И това, което предоставя фирма като Money, платформа като Money Rent е връзка между държавни агенции и държавни агенции, които да обменят неизползваното си оборудване. Но също така се е породила и нова идея не само между агенциите, а и вътре големи структури, каквато е, например, Орегонския отдел по транспорт, да се обменя оборудването, като това може да доведе до спестяване на големи ресурси. A spare equipment that no one uses, and we have a demand for that equipment. 
this young man is the mediator that used them to meet or had them to meet each other to make business. So this is the main idea behind collaborative economy or sharing economy or crowdfunding as you see later on. Това е обмена на нещо, което притежава една компания и търси друга, е в основата на тази економика на обмен, економиката на сътрудничество или краудсорсинг, както иначе го наричаме. We talk about Kiva, and then we mentioned Kickstarter and Indiegogo and other crowds. We talk later on, a lot in the morning lecture, we already mentioned Bitcoins. I want to show you about something about Dogecoin, because Bitcoin is not the only player in the virtual money, in money that exists only in computers. В паричния сектор до сега споменахме Indiegogo, споменахме Kiva, за нея ще говорим всъщност и по-късно Bitcoin, споменахме, но Dogecoin е нещо върху което аз искам да се спръз, защото Bitcoin далеч не е единствената валута, която съществува единствената парична единица, която съществува виртуално. Dogecoin is a revolutionary digital currency. It can easily be sent through the internet from person to person with total security. With instant transactions, you can send coins from Melbourne to Mumbai, from Madrid to Minneapolis, in seconds. It's simple and safe to use, and is already accepted at online retailers, where you can buy gifts, groceries, services, and so much more. What makes Dogecoin truly unique from other currencies is how its ease of use makes it the perfect way to instantly send cash gifts to people all around the world. You can send 10 cents to your favorite comment on Twitter, or $10 to your favorite band to purchase their latest album. You can even send $100 to a charity that you support. There's no middleman to take a cut, and the transactions are completely anonymous. If you are a creator, you'll find your fans can financially empower you. For the first time, you can directly receive cash from them, rather than a valueless like or retweet. You now have the opportunity to spend more time creating content, and less time counting cents. Be part of something big, something groundbreaking. Within the first of creation, the Dogecoin community has already achieved great things, from funding Olympic athletes to providing clean drinking water to those in need. The community is welcoming and amazingly generous. You'll fit right in. So how do I join in? To start, visit dogecoin.com and download your own digital wallet. Then, join the community on Reddit, where thousands of helpful people will happily answer any of your questions, and where you'll also receive some free coins. Dogecoin, the internet currency. We'll see you on the moon. Този клип ни показва как можем да станем част от една общност, която извършва разплащанията си с помощта на виртуалната валута Dogecoin, при която много лесно и бързо може да се правят транзакции от 10 цента или от 1000 долара в реално време и това да ни спести време за други дейности. More popular, I don't know here, but in Israel, Bitcoin is much more popular than, than Dogecoin, but they work on the same uh, idea behind them. And also, there is a community behind it. As you saw, there is community behind every collaborative economy initiative that uses uh, this idea. The third sector is the learning one. Uh, I recommend if you're not familiar, go and see what's going on in Coursera, in Day City, Kahan Academy, Puller, Course in Coursera. Кой е чувал за тези споменати до тук имена? So go on and roll into one of the three courses that are run running in Coursera. Запишете се на някои от свободните курсове в Coursera. 
some of them on the XML, actually Coursera is not a peer-to-peer -peer because they're a teacher and student status, but I'm going, what I want uh, to introduce you is a peer-to-peer -peer learning with a site called Gibbon. Искам да ви представя един сайт наречен Гибон. Вече сме в сектора на обучението, както разбрахте. Тук... The idea behind Gibon is that everyone can make a lesson in Gibon. Everyone can collect resources in the internet and web to make from them some lesson and put them in order and put questions between them in order to the other to learn. So if you have an idea, you want to, you want to teach someone something, you can go, you can go to give and collect videos, materials, websites, PDF files, etc. and make it as a lesson from someone else in the world. Идеята на Гибон е, че всеки би могъл да направи свой курс на обучение, ако се чувствате добри в тази област или желаете просто да обучите някой друг да предадете урок, можете тук да направите своята презентация и някой друг да я ползва. Някой използва ли Rent the Runway в сферата на продажба на услуги, на стоки вече се намираме? Rent the Runway. Rent the Runway is a fashion initiative that wants to rent a runway to close. First I will show you some interview with the people behind the startup, the idea, and then something else. Two women from Harvard Business School dreamed up a company based on a simple premise. A woman never has to wear the same outfit twice, and she doesn't have to buy it at all. Sounds good, right? Millions of other women like that idea, too. Michelle Miller is inside a warehouse in Secaucus, New Jersey, just west of New York City, with a story that you'll see only on CBS this morning. Michelle, we like it. Good morning. Good morning. Well, this is just about every woman's fantasy. Thousands and thousands of dresses right at her fingertips. Well, Rent the Runway was to change the way a woman gets dressed and how she invests in a wardrobe. So the woman who says to you, I have nothing to wear, you're turning her on her head. Well, we have 100,000 options for what she can wear. Inside this 40,000 square foot warehouse in Secaucus, New Jersey, is the giant closet that is Rent the Runway. The company, part e-commerce site and part tech startup, stores some pretty glamorous merchandise. 100,000 designer dresses, all available for rental through their website. Before we send out any dress or any piece of jewelry to a customer, we'll do a final check to make sure that it's in perfect condition. With more than 250 designer brands, rental prices range from $5 to $475. This $3,500 Calvin Klein dress rents for $170. This $1,000 Oscar de la Renta necklace for just $150. Jennifer Hyman is Rent the Runway's CEO. Who is Rent the Runway's target customer? I call her the go-getter girl. She's a professional and she's using Rent the Runway because it helps her optimize her time. Do these designers see you as their competition? Designers see us as one of their biggest allies because we're introducing a demographic of women that was not entering department stores to their brands. They come to me, they start renting $2,000 dresses and they develop that brand affinity early. So you hook them? I hook them, I'm like a drug dealer. <laughs> Can't get enough. Drug dealer of fashion. Do you think that the size is right? Kayla Gogos has been renting for weddings, parties, and dates going on three years. She now tries on possible rentals at the company's first standalone store in New York City. In a day where we don't always splurge, it feels like a very like, inexpensive luxury. With thousands of styles to choose from, customers can browse by trend or event, borrowing items for up to eight nights. Rent the Runway sends two sizes to ensure the proper fit. After the rental ends, the outfit is shipped back for free. Hyman says this has been Rent the Runway's secret weapon. Welcome to the country's largest drive. 
recycling facility. A warehouse and technology system that organizes and dispatches more than 90,000 items every day to its 5 million members across the country. An average dress on Rent the Runway goes home to 30 different customers. You get 30 turns out of every dress. How is that possible? It is possible when you own the dry cleaning process. So we now know what kinds of lace should be put on a dress, what kinds of sequins designers should use. But it wasn't that way when the company launched in 2009. We actually had our warehouse within a dry cleaning. Runway's internal research shows that the average woman buys 64 new pieces of clothing every year. But will rental therapy replace retail therapy? Women love to share when they look great. Women love to share when they feel self-confident. And it helps us that an icebreaker amongst women is, oh my god, I love your outfit, you look amazing. And women feel comfortable saying, now you know I rented the runway. And this company is continuing to expand. They plan to move into a new warehouse four times this size later this fall. And ladies, I have a little surprise for you. Nora, this for Ball Garong had your name written all over oh, it in Gale. Like it. Okay. I know it's not yellow, but this DVF was so hot. I just thought it would look so lovely on those fabulous curves of yours. You know, and Charlie, I just have to say, Nothing. Sorry. <laughs> yes, bring back the 10, the 12, and the 14. I'm, having, I'm going through a period, Michelle, but what a great idea this is. I love the love, wear, return, and that you can get it in two sizes. Uh, yeah, so many women use that, and, and here, here, to those great entrepreneurs, great in the company. Wonderful. Този репортаж ни показа един склад, който всъщност беше гигантски гардероб в Нью Джерси, където дрехи от известни дизайнери се предоставят под найем за около една десета от цената, която би следвало да заплатим за тях в магазина. Хората от склада коментираха служителите и организаторите на този бизнес, коментираха, че всъщност дизайнерите ги считат за съюзници в за техни съюзници в модната индустрия, защото а, хора, които никога не биха влезли да си купят дизайнерски облекла, всъщност по този начин имат достъп до тях. А, интересното случай е, че 90 000 дрехи или 90 000 броя а, всеки ден пътуват за някъде и се отдават под найем. Оборота е изключително голям. Статистиката, тяхна статистика показва, че една жена купува годишно около 64 броя дрехи и тази а, терапия, шопинг терапия, всъщност те я заместват като заместител, предлагат терапия за наемане на дрехи. Тази, този бизнес е изключително добре развиващ, се расте непрекъснато и плановете са да бъде открит още един такъв нов склад, четири пъти по-голям от това, което видяхме на записа. Which is an initiative to make our life uh, healthier and uh, relaxier than we usually do. At one point in my life, I was working very hard, traveling constantly, and just had become fairly one dimensional. I decided I wanted to spend time learning things that I thought would add value to my life and the life of those around me, and that was yoga, meditation nutrition, and just developed an incredible degree of respect and appreciation for all these teachers and experts that spend their lives teaching others and helping them learn how to live better lives. So we created Pop Expert to make that much easier. Pop Expert is a marketplace that makes it easy for you to find incredible experts to learn from across things that help you get better at life, work, and play. What sets Pop Expert apart is we focus on one-to-one -one sessions with experts that you do from the comfort of your home or office over a live video chat. It makes it easy to find the perfect person for you. It allows
allows us to learn as a culture how to live in a more connected way, how to use technology that makes us more human rather than distancing us. With Pop Expert, we've placed a big emphasis on really integrating the social graph into it so that we make it much easier for you to see the things that your friends are learning and to inspire your friends to learn things that you're passionate about as well. I, as a startup CEO, have an incredibly busy schedule, and yet I still am able to set aside at least one hour per week from the comfort of my home or office to learn something new. Right now, I'm studying ukulele, and it's been a lot of fun. Good job. If more people spend time using Pop Expert, we have an opportunity to help people live more fulfilled and connected lives. Казва как бихме могли много лесно и бързо да сменим начина си на живот, да грижим за здравето си или за духа, да използваме технологиите, за да живеем по-здравословно, да намерим специалисти в сферата на нашите интереси и да удовлетворим нашите желания и търсения в тази област. В един слънчев ден бихме могли да направим един йога урок навън, но сега не става. Някой друг път. Преминаваме към сферата в интериорното обзавеждане и как да организираме пространството и как то да бъде гъвкаво. Това е бизнесът. Не е бизнесът. It's a dynamic growth business. It has so much potential. It may be small now, but it could get huge in the next few years or months. There's no real way to know just how big and when. What you need is a great place to work for now. Some time to figure out just how big it might be. Unfortunately, finding the right place is very difficult. And time is one thing that you can't buy back. And even if you do find the right space, you have to plan for growth. So you end up taking much more space than you need. What you want is this, but what you end up with is this. It's more money than you should be spending right now. Money that could have gone towards one more developer, a kick-ass salesperson, or a few more months of runway. That's not the best way to grow your business. Pivot Desk fixes that by making it easy for you to find another great company that needs room for now, which eliminates risk for you and helps another entrepreneur get another great business off the ground. Of course, there's other ways to find a guest for your office space, but then you have to deal with all the distracting parts of the process, like finding them, negotiating terms, collecting checks, yelling when there's too much food left in the fridge, knowing who's supposed to be in your office and how to communicate easily with them. Pivot Desk gives you all the tools you need to make a productive, beneficial relationship for both businesses. And when you get too big for your britches again, or need to find some room for a development or sales team in another city, Pivot Desk can help you do that too. And the best part is, as more and more entrepreneurs come together through Pivot Desk, new relationships spring up, innovation comes to life, and thriving startup communities start to grow across the country and around the world. Pivot Desk, room for growing businesses. Pivot Desk is located in the development of the company, the place to expand their offices and, of course, companies that are more than the necessary office place to оползотворят, като пуснат съответно на ематери в тези свободни пространства. And we want to share how to prepare 
food between ourselves. Преминаваме към хранителната индустрия и аз бих искал да спомена кичит, след като вече говорихме за Cook and Go, как да приготвяме храна и да обменяме тази информация. So you can enter into uh, first meal or uh, other websites and discover meals, places to eat and places uh, to share your food and uh, there is some regularity about this in order to be able to uh, order from someone uh, food and enjoy it and, and not poison it. Това е място, където бихме могли да открием храна такава, когато да бъде по нашия вкус, да сме сигурни, че можем да споделим информацията, която ние имаме, да научим нещо ново или да предадем нашия опит. При услугите мога да дам пример с Open Garden. Това е услуга, която позволявам да споделяме интернет връзката си с други. Open Garden operates in the market of connectivity. And in the market of connectivity you have the traditional players, the mobile operators that use technologies like 3G or 4G to connect you to the internet. You have other players or carriers that use Wi-Fi or DSL or fiber. Then you have a new breed of players that look at connectivity from the sky. They want to connect you to the internet using balloons, using drones, using satellites. And then you have Open Garden that looks at connectivity from the ground by interconnecting all the devices directly, building peer-to-peer -peer connections. And that's a 100% software, uh, software solution that doesn't cost any additional investment in infrastructure. Много са доставчиците на, на връзки, а, с, а, на всякакъв тип връзки. А, нашата компания е тази, която предоставя свързване на а, наземните устройства едно към друго, на принципа peer-to-peer и а, по този начин а, улеснява клиентите. Companies on initiative is Uber. It's a let everyone who is on a car to be a taxi driver. It shared the car resources together in order to move from one place to other place. Сферата на транспорта ще се фокусирам върху Uber. Това е компания, която позволява на всеки, който притежава кола, да бъде таксиметров шофьор. Also, we can share some. Services, for example, in Fiverr, we let us sell or buy services for five bucks, for five dollars. You can ask for anything. I need someone to design my logo for my company. I can ask you for Fiverr. I will find there an art designer that can do it for me. And other things, Fiverr is an Israeli company or Israeli startup that started it. Worldwide now these days about this uh, idea that if we need a small service for someone, maybe someone somewhere can do it. Fiverr е израелска компания, която работи в сферата на услугите и интересното при нея е, че можем там да заявим някаква дребна услуга, каквато и да е тя и някой някъде по света ще я свърши за нас само срещу 5 долара.
www.mariastorich.com дали ли да споделим складовата си площ. Помислете си за всички гаражи, празни стаи и мазета, които стоят неупотребявани и използвани около вас, в района, в който живеете. Те биха могли да предоставят място за складиране на вашите вещи. Така че това е инициативата, която предлагаше mystorich.com. До сега повечето примери бяха ориентирани към peer-to-peer или човек към човек да се обърне, за да споделят ресурсите, с които разполагат. А сега отиваме към връзката бизнес до бизнес. Каргоматик е компанията, която обменя или предоставя логистични услуги между компании. What if local trucking could be easier? It takes too much time for shippers and carriers to connect, and then there's all the follow-up and paperwork. But not anymore. Cargomatic makes local trucking simple, solving all of these problems by connecting shippers and trusted carriers with new, easy technology. Here's how it works. Kenny's a driver who has to deliver three pallets across town by this afternoon. Maria's company is along Kenny's route, and she has a shipment just about ready for pickup. Maria logs into Cargomatic. She enters her freight information and gets a great quote. No more calls or lengthy searches. She books, and her offer is instantly sent to carriers in the area. One of those carriers is Kenny. Dispatch accepts the offer, and Kenny gets all the information he needs from the Cargomatic app. Now his truck is full. Cargomatic makes sure Maria knows the status of her shipment and receives proof of delivery as soon as Kenny's job is done. And Kenny, he knows that Cargomatic will pay him fast in only a few short days. Makes sense, right? Yeah, Kenny and Maria are really loving Cargomatic. It's so easy to use, and there's always personalized support when they need it. Sign up today and be a part of the fast-growing Cargomatic network. Cargomatic makes local trucking easy. Dispatch has it covered. Cargomatic осигурява посредническата връзка между собственика на товара и транспортната фирма, като покрива всички останали координационни, административни и други връзки между двамата, двете страни. Предложих на вашето внимание много примери за съществуващи такива бизнеси, които са от сферата на колаборативната економика или економика на сътрудничество. Както видяхте от примерите, повечето хора са млади, инициативни, хора като вас, които имат идея и са я въплатили в реалност. Money of our peers, money of other people, in order to build equity for our company and to succeed in business. След обедната почивка ще говорим за това как можем да комбинираме економиката на сътрудничество с краудсорсинга, така че да натрупваме средства, да наберем средства за нашия начален капитал при една ново създадена компания. Благодаря ви. Ако имате въпроси, задайте ги.